Hi, I am Sivam Krish. We will discuss today the impact that cloud computing is going to have in design. For those who don't know too much about the cloud, no worries. This picture will give you some idea. It's a lot of computers that are interconnected and floating in the cloud. They put it up there so that you don't have to worry about them. The main idea here is that it allows people to use it instead of worrying about it. With cloud computing comes massive amount of computational power making it both available and affordable. So what is it going to do for architecture? We know today that automating the drawing board was not the smartest thing to do. But that was what there was a demand for at that time. Actually, there was not even a demand for that. Many draftsmen hated computers, hated CAD. Many simply refused to use it. It was difficult to get them to use it. So the type of CAD that is with us today started off as an automated drawing board. As Henry Ford once said, if we had asked people what they wanted, they would have asked for faster horses. So cloud computing for now is going to be that faster horse. It's going to be better, faster and more powerful. But we need to look well beyond. We need to look at and understand how the design process works now. When we start a design, nothing is certain. We know very little about the design problem and virtually nothing about the final design. Design then is a process of changing this around. At the end of the design process, we would have arrived at all the answers. We will have a high level certainty that we did not and could not have had at the beginning. This is well known. But there's something that we almost always do that is less known. We forget what happens after the design is over. We also ignore what happens before the design starts. These are important areas as you will see later in this lecture. In the early stages of design, we mostly use pencil and paper. You can't use computers at this stage as they are not good for exploring abstract concepts quickly. Once we are more certain of the design, we use computers to create and visualize the design. And after that, we can use computers to analyze its performance. We can then make changes and iterate this process till we arrive at a satisfactory outcome. So this is the way most architects work and it will remain so for some time. Something else has been happening in the last few decades that is likely to change the way we design. With digitization, it seems that we are no longer designing the way we used to design. A lot of things now happen in parallel and a lot of design activity is handled by programs. The conventional design process is collapsing. What you now see is not design the way it was practiced but the building of virtual models. These are information rich models that will tell you how much your building is going to cost, how it's going to be put together, how hot or cold it's going to be, and how it'll look. You can even walk through it well before it's built. So digital design is transforming design into a process of developing virtual models from conception to completion. Let's go back and take a look at its implications in the design process. This is the early 
or conceptual stage of design and perhaps the most important stage. It's at this stage that all the important decisions about the design are made. More than 80% of the commitments are made at this stage where we are relatively ill-informed and in many cases not in a position to make good decisions. Now, CAD can currently support us only after we have completed the conceptualization of the design. This is not good. I'll tell you why. Let's look at it from a view of knowledge because we need more knowledge to make informed decisions in the early stage of design. Let's see where this knowledge comes from and how we can use it best. If you have not noticed it, you are no longer designing. Even in your current CAD system, you may not be aware that you are using programs to design your design. And these programs are growing smarter and more powerful day by day. They are doing most of the work now in almost all CAD packages. So CAD companies are now trying to move on to early stage design for many reasons. One reason discussed before is that if you want performance increases, you can only have it in the early stages of the design, where CAD is rarely used now. You may have heard about performative design. Well, that stuff is worth talking about only here. Then there's another reason, efficiency gains. Programs eliminate grunge work that is shown in black here. Things get done. This is why customers will pay for CAD. More importantly, CAD programs are now beginning to pull together data around modeling, simulation and costing better than ever. And by doing so, they are bridging the virtual and the real more easily and more elegantly than ever before. Now, let's look at the extension of this. Suppose CAD systems get good enough to reach into the early conceptual stage of design. Then something very interesting can happen. If your programs handle bulk of the grunge work, you can shoot out completed designs with costs, performances and walkthroughs. Not only can you shoot out one, you can shoot out many. Welcome to generative design. This is what generative design will eventually achieve. Not that it can be done now, but this is where it's heading. This lecture comes to you from the lost continent. Thank you for watching.